What's going on guys, Billy here, and today I'll be running through every single drone regulation put into place by the FAA. So this pertains to flying your drone in the United States. Now just for reference, I'm shooting this video on January 21st, 2018, and these rules and regulations always seem to be changing. So if you guys are watching this at a later date, be sure to check the description to make sure I haven't made an updated version. Anyway, I want to shoot this video with a bit of a twist, and that is explaining these rules and regulations as fast as possible, so that one, you're not sitting here for 20 plus minutes listening to me go on and on, and two, so you guys get the basics as fast as possible and you can get outside and start flying your drone. So anyway, without wasting any more time, let's start going over all of the rules and regulations you must follow when flying a drone in the United States. First things first, you must register with the FAA through their website if your drone weighs between 0.55 pounds and 55 pounds. When you do this, you're actually registering yourself as the pilot and owner of your drone and not the drone itself. Now once you go through this process, you'll get an identification number which can then be affixed to your drone by either a piece of paper or you can just write it right within the battery compartment, but this is something that you must do with all of your drones. So that one single identification number will be good for all the drones that you fly. Next up, when flying, you must remain at or under 400 feet. This is the altitude limit for flying your drone. Now there's a way to bend the rules, so let's say you're flying above a 200 foot structure. You are therefore allowed to fly 400 feet above that structure, so this would give you a total altitude of 600 feet. Now this next one may be a little bit harder to follow considering the range on some of these newer drones, but you must always be able to maintain a visual line of sight with your drone as it's flying. So this means if it's up in the air, you must always be able to physically see it with your own eye. Now again, it might be a little bit tough if you're using FPV goggles. So this means that if your vision is blocked, you need a spotter with you so that he can maintain your visual line of sight for you. Moving on, before flying your drone, you must always check for no-fly zones. This can best be done with an app called Before You Fly, which was developed and is maintained by the FAA themselves. It will give you an up-to-date look at the no-fly zones and airports that are nearby. Now, if you happen to find yourself in the zone of an airport and still want to fly, you must call the tower of that airport to give them a heads up that you'll be flying your drone. Aside from the no-fly zones marked on the map, there are also certain areas and locations that will dictate whether they allow drones or not. So for example, my old high school has now posted signs on all their doors saying no drone zone. Also, when I went on vacation to the Grand Canyon and Mount Rushmore, they had signs too that said no drone zone. And that basically goes for every single national park. You're not allowed to take off, land, or operate a drone from the grounds. This next one is pretty self-explanatory. Don't operate your drone while you're under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Just don't do it. It's way too complicated of a device to be used while you're impaired. Now for those of you looking to make money off of your drone doing work for different companies, you're going to have to go out and get your FAA Part 107 certification. It's a multiple choice test that costs $150 to take and you don't get your money back if you fail, but again, you will need this certification if you're looking to make money with your drone. If not, if you're just a hobbyist pilot and you want to fly around, take some pictures and videos, then you must follow Section 336 and all the rules that come with it, which are all the rules that I'm stating in this video. Moving on down the list, if you're going to be flying in a populated area, you need to stay away from crowds. You can't be flying directly over people's heads. That goes for stadiums, public events, and even streets. So if you live somewhere like the city where the population is very dense, it's going to be tough to find a spot to fly your drone. Something that we're starting to see is waivers being given out for the ability to fly over crowds legally. The first one was given to CNN. I really don't know all that much about these waivers as this seems to be a one-of-a-kind thing for CNN and I guess their whole drone team. It doesn't look like you can go onto the FAA website and apply for these, but again, as I said, these are always changing and I'm going to have to stay on top of this as this develops. And finally, do not interfere with emergency response efforts. This goes for wildfires, severe storms, and even everyday emergency responders such as helicopters bringing patients to and from the hospital. Usually the FAA will blast out a tweet or some sort of posting through their website letting you know if there's some sort of natural disaster that you need to stay away from. So I know that that was pretty quick, but again, I wanted to put a little twist on this video and explain all of the rules and regulations as fast as possible so that if you guys need a quick refresher, you can come to this video and not have to waste a bunch of time listening to me ramble on. And also, if you are a new drone flyer, you're going to be able to watch this video and get a hold of the United States drone rules and regulations fairly quickly. I know that there are some people out there who look over these rules and regulations as they might think that they are too restrictive, and while I'm not here to tell you that you're right or wrong because I really don't have an opinion on these current rules and regulations, I just want to make sure everyone out there is flying safely. Even though these things are looked at as expensive adult toys, they have some serious power behind them and can cause a lot of damage. 
But guys, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'll throw the links down in the description. Both usernames are just simply at Billy Kyle. I've been trying to be a lot more active over there, and I've also been trying to do a lot of traveling and posting some cool pictures over there. So again, be sure to check both of those out. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.